What's up guys? Alright, so it's cold, it's early, I'm trying to get started on this and everything like that so I can try to knock this out. So, um, yeah, we're back with the Honda, you know, we're trying to finish her up and everything like that. I've come across a couple things that I wanted to let you guys know that I found, so here is what it is. Uh, so I believe the smoking is the valve stem seals. It seems that when it sits, it pulls up some oil on the pistons. When I start it up and let it run, it, it then will smoke a little bit, and then after that, it's done. So to me, that's usually a pretty common sign of valve stem seals. They're, they're pretty bad. But uh, after I blow the first bit of smoke out, it just puffs a little bit. It doesn't seem to collect more or anything like that, or blow big plumes of smoke. So I'm not so worried about it. We're going to let it ride for right now, but we have a bigger problem. So, uh, I, the only way I can get it to run decently, even when I put in the OBD1 ECU and the OBD1 distributor and got everything converted, no check engine light or anything like that, it runs, it drives down the road and everything, but the power band is really weird and uh, the only way it'll idle and run decent is if I crank the distributor full advance. So I had a Civic like this before. It reminded me just like it when I drove it. I thought it was the OBD2 ECU, but it's probably not. What it was on that was that the cam gear was a tooth off. So today what we're going to tackle is we're going to go ahead and try to retime this engine or verify that it is, it is in time. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that it is a tooth off. Uh, I believe it would be retarded. Um, and that is causing the engine not to operate properly and the timing to be way wrong uh, mechanically and electronically or ignition related. So that's why it has to be really advanced because the cam timing is off and it's trying to counteract but we're, I'm hoping that's the problem. I'm hoping it solves it. I'm hoping it gets a drive, and I'm really excited to see if this is it. I've been waiting to get back to this car. I've had other issues going on that has just prevented me to get back to the car. I will say it's nice to be home from vacation. The vacation was awesome. You know, um, as you see in the last video, I fixed my wife's car after she had her little debacle with her trim piece, and now I'm finally getting back to finishing this. So here it is. We're going to get this car hopefully running properly today so that we can start on this car. This car is the main focus of the winter and it is already almost January and I have not started. I'm running behind all because of this taking up my time. But we're so close. So close. So we're going to get started. We're going to get things set up so I can check to see if it is out of time and hopefully sprinkle a little magic and fix it. <sighs> All right, for all you guys who have never really tackled with this type of issue on a Honda or anything like that, um, step one is going to be we're going to need to take this cover off. This is the cam um, cam timing gear co cover. In order to get this off, we got to get the valve cover off. So in order to get the valve cover off, we got to take out the spark plug wires and we got to take off all these screws that hold the valve cover on and our uh, and our tube, our uh, our uh, PVC tube, basically our breather tube. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and instead of making you watch it like I normally do with all the time-lapse I'm just gonna All right, as you can see it is done and magically I have gloves, but either way Everything is off now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this spark plug out And we're gonna use probably the dipstick or a long screwdriver or whatever. We're gonna stick it in there and We're gonna slowly rotate the engine until it reaches its highest point now We're doing that because we need to set the piston at top dead center I have no lower cover because you can't really see that right now, but this engine didn't come with a lower cover so I don't have a timing mark to go off of. So we're going to set the piston at the, at the highest point on the compression stroke so that way we know it's at top dead center. And then on the pulley here, um, I'll show you better here in a little bit, there's some marks that need to align in a certain position to know that the cam and the crank are in time with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and get the spark plug out, get set up, and then I'll show you how we do this. And then, um, you know, we'll see if this engine is in time, which honestly, I hope it's not. I hope it's just a tooth off and we can fix that and get it running because I'm telling you, it runs just like the last Honda I had that had this issue. All right, guys. So I went ahead and put the valve cover on because I'm going to be turning over the engine and everything and showing you a little trick. And this will just prevent me from making a mess potentially or anything like that. And it also will protect anything from falling into the engine while I'm working. All I really needed it off for was to get the top cover off, which we already got off. So now I just put it on for now. Now here's a trick since, like I said, I have no timing covers, nothing. I need the compression stroke in order to set the, the engine to TDC. So what I'm going to take is I'm going to take this rag and I took out the spark plug. And I'm going to stick it in the, in the uh, spark plug hole like so. And then I'm going to go inside the car and I'm just going to bump the key until it shoots out. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll put the camera out here so you can see what happens. All right, so now as you saw, the rag or little towel just shot right out of, the, out of the spark plug hole, which is exactly what we wanted. That basically tells me that that cylinder is on a compression stroke, and so um, all the valves are closed and everything like that, and as that piston comes up, it's making compression, and it shoots the, the rag out. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick, take a long screwdriver. Um, on this car, it has a straight dipstick, so I'll just stick the dipstick in there. I'll put a Sharpie mark on it so I can watch it go up and down and verify that I'm getting it to its highest point. And then I will know that the number one cylinder is um, at top dead center at, a, at the highest point of its travel. Now for some of you guys that are unfamiliar, each engine is different. But on a four cylinder, number one is always gonna be closest to your timing belt or your crank pulley. So one, two, three, four. So that's how we know what the order is for this vehicle. All right guys, so I went ahead and did it just for you guys for learning. I was sitting there trying to go through and show you guys what I was talking about with the timing marks, but it was just nearly impossible for me to show you on the computer and on the engine. So I opened up the other Z6 I have here so I could show you guys and also just verify a little better for myself because I thought I had it close but it was just better to just check on another engine that I have lying here that's in pristine condition uh, whether I was right and I was right the tooth that the cam was off about two teeth so we went ahead and adjusted that and I matched it up with the engine on the ground and the um, diagram in the factory service manual and while I did that I decided to use this as a learning curve for you guys since you guys will be able to see easier on this engine so here let me flip the camera around and as you can see, this engine is in great shape. I mean, it's not very often you pull a Honda engine that is just that clean um, and everything. So, you know, underneath the valve cover, there's m minimal varnish and everything. Underneath the cams, I mean, you can just see here, everything is just nice, tan, clean oil colored. Either way, and coming to the crank pulley, which you'll notice is in great shape here. And actually, it's so... It's in such good shape that it's very reflective and kind of hard. So I'm going to try to move this around. Okay, but here you'll see here's one hash mark. Here's the other hash mark. And if I get up closer, uh, it's really hard to see. It's really faint. Can I move the light around? But it says up right there. Really faint. Hard to tell. But it is there. It says up. All right, so on the uh, B7... Uh, non VTEX and everything these will line up back here with these arrow here and here and it says PO8 that means non VTEX on the Z6 however there's I forgot to mention there's another notch down here that lines up with this line so on the Z6 you line this line up and then that will also show you um, a dip change in the in the lines as you'll notice we're sitting about a tooth below the line there and it's kinda hard to see but we're uh, we're not matched up there either but uh, so on the Z6, you want to line this line up here, and that is where you go on a P8, P08 non VTEC. You line these hash marks up with the horizon of the valve cover and, or those arrows. So this is just a better example. I wish I could get, well, actually, that kind of helps. Um, just to show you what I was talking about with the three lines, and as you can see right there, that line matches there. And I actually have a cover and everything here, so you can see that the hash marks are lined up with the pointer for the uh, TDC. So this engine just made it a lot easier just to double verify everything so that I know it is correct. All right, back over here at the engine, I'm going to see if I can zoom in and show you. Here, you will notice the angle is kind of hard to see, but there's our line. It is in line with our pointer. And if you can tell, if we move just right, you'll see that we are about a tooth below the arrow. <clears throat> All right, guys, so I've done the best to show you what I'm talking about in regards to the timing marks and everything for the Z6 on how to check to make sure it's timed. Our engine was two teeth roughly off, so I fixed that. I'm really hoping that this makes this engine run a lot better because that would just be great. Um, I can live with the valve stem seals leaking of some oil while it sits and smoking on startup. That's no big deal. Um, I just want to get the car driving and decently reliable because I really want to teach my wife how to drive five speed because she's got the RX-8. I got the race car. 
I'm trying to get her in the seat of one of those and just get her driving a standard. She knows how to drive a standard. She's not very comfortable. She doesn't, she gets confused with the gear shifting. She works the clutch great. So it shouldn't be that hard. I just need a car that I don't mind her kind of learning on. You know, it's like I don't want to take my brand new G35 and have her trash my new clutch and stuff in her learning process. I mean, I wouldn't be mad. She's my wife. But it just, you know, let's take a beater car like this, like this Honda here. Let's just take this beater car like this Honda here and teach her in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this buttoned up, get the tensioner tightened up and everything. Um, oh, in regards to the tensioner. Uh, so what the tensioner is all the way, and of course the lighting's really hard here. But uh, right, focus maybe. Alright, so that is the tensioner bolt right there. So all I did was loosen it and that loosened tension on the timing belt. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise three, three teeth at least and that should tighten everything up and then I just tighten the tensioner back and that automatically sets the tension for it. It's a pretty simple process. Um, so yeah, you shouldn't have to worry about it. But you just get your timing belt adjusted so that you should have minimal slack over here. It should... Hold on, let me zoom out. You should have minimal slack on this side. It should deflect about a half inch. And then all the slack will be on this side. And so as I rotate everything counterclockwise, all that slack on, on, the, on the front side is going to rotate around to the back side. And the tensioner is going to absorb that up, set the tension, and then we just torque it down. Um, I'll have to check and let you know what the torque specs is. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I think it's like around 30 foot-pounds. I'll check it out and let you know. But I'm going to get that done. And then we're going to see how this puppy runs. Alright guys, so we got everything back together for now. I'm going to put the cover on after I start up and verify that everything is operational. So, um, I got the timing belt retentioned. I got everything adjusted. I've double checked everything. So, we're going to see if this thing runs any better. Now, I went ahead and... Over here, I went ahead and recentered the distributor before I had to crank it all the way um, to the front to advance it, to get it to run. Now I've reset it back to a more like the normal position. So we're gonna fire this thing up. Already seems a lot better. Oh yeah. Way more responsive. That engine is running way, way more responsive. It runs a lot better. I'm going to get this buttoned up, get the front top cover back on, and just get the wheel back on everything. And then we're going to take this thing for a ride and see how it does. That it right there just made a world of difference. The whole, the, the way the whole car, before it would just be sluggish up until about four grand, then it would kind of rev out. But now it's very responsive like it should be. You know, very light with the uh, revs and everything. So I'm extremely happy. I'm glad I decided to look into that. I knew that's what the problem was. I've experienced it before. So hopefully it helped you guys out. So stay tuned. I'm gonna get this buttoned out and we're gonna go for a ride in Project Honda, Project Slow. Come up with a name already. I have no idea. I don't know, Project Coupe, uh, Project D-Series, uh, I don't know. Just come up with something, help me out, I'm struggling. Either way, I'm just going to start calling this thing the Honda. Alright guys, so just to close out this video and show you, I finally got it dialed, it's idling right, it's running good, everything seems to be golden, minus the speedometer. So I'm going to have to change the vehicle speed sensor, no big deal, but finally she's idling like she should and she seems to be dialed so honestly i'll tell you what's funny here in a second i'll tell you what the problem is but first let's go for a little drive
Alright guys, so here's what the issue was, and I'm going to say it was probably just uh, oversight on my part. But yes, it was out of timing. That got it to make power and fix the power band and everything. But I was having that high idle issue, and I've been chasing it for the last couple hours. Didn't really want to update the vlog because I really had no idea what was causing the problem. I'm going to be honest. I thought maybe I had got it a too too uh, too advanced when I corrected its retard condition. So I reset the cam timing again. Everything was right where it needed to be. I double checked everything, triple checked. And then just out of curiosity, or actually not even out of curiosity, just by the, just the car gods giving a little light on the subject, I moved my hand while it was idling, still idling at like two grand in the garage. I moved my hand and it happened to cover the valve cover breather tube. And when I did that, all of a sudden it idled down. And I was like, whoa. And I pulled my hand away and it was like massive amount of vacuum on the breather um, outlet on the valve cover. And I was like, man, this is weird. Why is it doing this? And I'm like sitting there thinking and thinking and thinking. I'm like, what, what, why is there so much vacuum on this, on this breather tube? Then I realized I switched over to the Y8 intake manifold and I broke the PCV valve that goes into the breather box on the Y8. So I used the Z6 thinking, oh yeah, this will fix it. Um, and I made it work. But the funny part is the Z6 doesn't have a PCV valve that goes into the breather box. That's just an adapter to hook the hose into the breather box. The PCV valve is actually on the intake manifold. So I was running without a PCV valve and that is exactly why I had a high idle and probably why I had all that smoke and everything. So I went to the spare Z6 engine I had in the corner. I ripped the PCV valve off of that engine and I modified the um, breather tube well, not the breather tube, but the tube, the vacuum tube that goes to the intake manifold down to the where the PCV valve should be, and then the breather box on the back of the engine. I spliced it into there, and all of a sudden the car idled, no smoke, no nothing. So, um, you know, I'm gonna wait until tomorrow when it's cold, start up again, see if I get any smoke out of it. But after I did that, it doesn't seem to smoke at all, um, out of normal, like nothing that, like it was. And uh, the idle is, as you've seen, is nice, smooth, right around where it should be, about 750 RPMs. So, long story short, I didn't have a PCV valve, and that was my problem. So now she's all good to go. She seems to drive well, idle well. So a few more little knickknacks to get done on this car and it'll be roadworthy. It's going to need some tires, need some rear brakes. I have rear brakes. I'm not really worried about all that right now, but if I needed to, I could drive this thing in a pinch. So mission successful. So that was, that's going to close out this video. I'm going to stop rambling, but basically now we got Project Slow Honda, um, you know, whatever done and we can move on to Project Race Car and stuff like that. So. Here shortly, look forward to Project Race Car videos, and please share this video around to all your friends. I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm so close to 100 subs, and that's really exciting to me. I never thought I would even get near 100 subs, but we're still growing. So if you could just pass around, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Thanks for all your support. I really appreciate it. I will check you guys later.